All right, everybody, it's the Jerry Metcalf podcast where top real estate agents tell how they do it. And today we are so excited to have a good friend, Molly Harris from Hawaii with Compass. Molly, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Jerry. I'm so happy to finally get a chance to do this after being a listener for a while now. I know. I love that. It's been way, we, we, should have had, we should have had you on a long time ago, but you're finally here. So let's go ahead and tell everybody about, explain Hawaii to us and exactly where and what you're selling in Hawaii. She's a, pretty much a top top agent there, everybody. Yeah, you know, this has been also um, a stellar year for probably a lot of agents in, in all the resort markets, but my best year was 2020, and I've already exceeded my 2020 numbers by June 1st in 2021, so it's going to be wow. a great year. Uh, we're really thankful for how everything turned out financially in uh, Hawaii after COVID because March and April last year, the phone didn't ring. It was crickets, and then all of a sudden, it just kind of turned on, so... Uh, I will start by saying that the lovely background behind the lovely Jerry Metcalf right now is one of my very favorite listings. Um, right above her head is the rim of Waipio Valley, which is considered probably the you know number three tourist attraction in all of Hawaii after uh, Pearl Harbor, of course, and our uh, Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. So a lot of people don't know that the islands of Hawaii, there are hundreds of islands actually, but there's really seven main islands. And I live on the big island of Hawaii, which is Hawaii Island. A lot of people know it as Kona because uh, the town of Kona is where Kona coffee comes from, which is the best. But what a lot of people don't realize is that you could put all the other islands in the island chain on top of the big island and there would still be room left over. So it's really, really big. It takes about maybe 16 hours to go all the way around the perimeter. So people always ask, you get island fever. And I'm like, no, if anything, I'm like, get me out of my car. I'm always driving. It's like an hour to Costco. But yeah, it's really, what's really cool about it is that we have all of these different microclimates on our island. It goes from this, you know, black brown lava desert of just rocks everywhere. Like when you land at the Kona airport, people look around like, am I on the moon? Like it is not what people expect. And then it goes to the lushest of lush green rainforest, like you see behind you with waterfalls and rivers coming through, you know, the Which mountain. is what we think of, yeah. Exactly. And then we even get snow on the big island. We have two of our tallest wow. volcanoes for like six months a year get snow on them. And where I live, which is in a little town of Waimea, we're at like 2,600 feet. It gets down like in the forties at night in the winter and we all have fireplaces. So these are like, the surprises people don't know when they're learning about Hawaii. What a fun place. And I bet since COVID, it's become quite the place for people to go and buy second homes or just move and not live. And Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. what was really interesting is about um, maybe 15 years ago, as tech was starting to build and the wealth was starting to build in a much younger demographic, we saw a lot of changes in our buyer demographic. So in the resort areas, which is what I specialize in on the Kohala coast, you know, there's homes from, you know, really any price up to a hundred million dollars, over $150 million, like the crazy, crazy homes down there. And it used to be our parents' age, you know, that were affording that level of wealth and, and moving here. Uh, but then all of a sudden as tech, you know, expanded, not only did younger people have the wealth to move here, but it also allowed them to be mobile with their jobs. And so we saw, you know, people in their thirties buying these 10, $20 million houses in the wow. resorts. So that started earlier, you know, in the earlier two thousands, but then with COVID, you know, it just like supercharged it, you know, now people are having to work in school from home and they're like, why am I going to do this? And you know, the inland part of Detroit or whatever it is, not saying about right. Detroit. Yeah, I get, why, we get it. Not oh, everybody gets it. Like, yeah. So, so, so this, I love it. I love, so that gives us about your market. Now let's start talking about you. You've been a real estate agent, even though you don't look like you've been alive long enough to do this, but you've been a real estate agent for over 20 years. Yes. And you haven't always been in Hawaii and you were already a top agent in Hawaii. So let's go back to give the whole story Let's get back to the beginning. How and why did you get into this business? Okay. Well, the beginning, beginning is that I was born to real estate parents. Poor thing. Mm. So was our daughter. You should have known better. I know, right? And then they told me, get your real estate license as soon as you turn 18. I'm like, I will never sell real estate, right? But I had worked in my dad's real estate That's offices awesome. yeah. from the time I was a kid and, you know, driving his golf carts to the spec homes and all this. And Now, where you know, was this? 
Where this is in Florida. You? I'm from Miami. Okay. Okay. And my dad was one of the developers of the Doral uh, residential community around uh, the Doral Golf Club. A lot of people know that from you know famous golf tournaments there over the years. So um, grew up there and uh, actually went into medicine. I was pre-med in college, thought I was going to be a doctor or a PA. And I was in the middle of you know finishing school and I was working for a plastic surgeon of all people in Orange County. And uh, he just said, you know, Molly, this, I will help you, you know, finish school. I always want you to work with me and you're just fabulous. But you talk about Hawaii all the time and you talk about wanting to be a mom. And like, by the time you finish school and get your practice started and it, you, you're going to be like 35 years old before you can have a kid, like you're never going to be able to do that. Why wouldn't you just get your real estate license in Hawaii and go sell there? That's what so I your would mentor do. basically told you that. Yes. Oh, that's how, like, wow. And so Most people would have said, you can't do that. That's not that, plausible. That's crazy that, talk. Or said, you know, stick with the slow and steady, not go get a commission job. Yeah. You know? But it was a doctor thing. told you to do that too. How impressive. Okay. So keep going. This is good stuff. <laughs> so I had lived in Hawaii for a few years prior to this conversation, of course. And my husband and I uh, moved back to Hawaii in 2002 and so this you got the advice in what year from the doctor thousand and do and that was it i was like two months later i'm like you're right let's go like, so you just like took him seriously and did it yeah i love that that was it i I'm mean like, i missed hawaii so much Jerry. i mean that's what it's all about like this yeah. place is so incredible and once it's part of you you just can't let go of it and i always wanted to come back so but the thing is you know like trying to start in this business i tell all new agents that i try to mentor i'm like have yeah. another full-time job for the first two years. You're going to make, you're going to lose money the first two years as a realtor. Yeah. But on year three, it starts to perpetuate itself. And then all of a sudden you have, you know, circle of influence and it starts coming to you. So if you can just get through those first two years, you'll be fine. So we moved back here. I was getting ready to take a job with a really esteemed resort community here on the coast. I was supposed to start on a Monday. And on the Thursday before that, they had found... Hawaiian burial grounds on the property mm -hmm. and a judge put a stop to the development and the developer called me and said you still have a job but we can't sell anything and I'm like I just moved back wow. for this great job you know I'm ready to go and what am I going to do now and this was like on-site sales then right correct okay. for like just a little bit of community and I ran into a guy I'd worked for years before um, at a community called Hualalai. A lot of people are familiar with the Four Seasons Hualalai is one of our best resorts in the islands. And he says, Molly, I have this great opportunity. I think you're perfect for it. I'm like, what could that possibly be? That you know, is it here? He says, No, no, it's in Costa Rica. And I'm like, What? I just oh, got no. back. This is where my heart is. I want to plant roots. I want to have kids here. Not happening. And yeah. he's like. Molly, it's a, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I'm just like, what am I going to do? My husband says, just take the flight down there, go see it, you know, and, and check it out. So I flew down and it was like, you know, being at, 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 you know, ground zero for a, an opportunity that I never, never would have gotten in Hawaii at that age. I think at that point I was about 26 years old and oh. uh, I saw the writing on the wall. It's like, we're going to have to kind of make this sacrifice to go to beautiful Costa Rica um, to, to really, you know, dig in and get started. And, um, I went to work for the Peninsula Papagayo development in Costa Rica, which is a 2,300 acre, beautiful development on the ocean on the Pacific side. And I was from Miami. So I spoke Spanish already going into it, which was super helpful. Wow. Yeah. But what you learn wow. is that in different countries, real estate is transacted very differently. There are no licensing laws for real estate in Costa Rica. So your taxi driver can sell you real estate and does. <laughs> so wow. it's just like the wild west, right? So here yeah. I am opening this luxury development, you know, coming out of the ground. There really hasn't been anything like that down there. And we had to get Americans and Canadians primarily comfortable with spending, you know, three to $20 million in a third world country <laughs> that is, you know, very safe politically and all that too. But, you know, like the oceanfront property, you don't even own it. It's, it's like leased land. And so yeah. that was really my, my start, you know, in the business was so that was, so first of all, okay. So Hawaii, but then right back to Costa Rica. And then you took the job because it was an opportunity that was big for your age, but then you still had to convince people 
to spend three to what, 20 million? I mean, and How'd I do that with hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, down the line there too. Yeah. So, uh, I, I would love to say it's just that I'm such a great salesperson, but I think it was also a hot time for Costa Rica. It was in all the news, you know, like the next Hawaii basically. And uh, it was, it was awesome to be part of the genesis of something like that developing, you know, in that beautiful country and the people there are so wonderful. Uh, and I was really, you know, having the time of my life with my husband and we we're making a ton of money. And I opened my own real estate company down there and we were behind all of these big developments. Uh, we were wow. doing a Carlton project and, you know, we found ourselves at a, at a wedding sitting next to the president of Costa Rica. And, you know, I was like the top agent in the country. And I'm like, how did this happen overnight? You know, yeah. it was just, how it did that happen? So great. And then it just right place, right time, you know, and yeah. I think I work well, a little and there's, a lot of You got a little something to you too. I mean, take yeah. some credit here. Right. So here we are on top of the world, Jerry. We have our baby. Our daughter was born in Costa Rica and she was healthy and like we had everything on the horizon. And then the recession happened. <laughs> and you know, the, so this was what year? So this is uh, what year? 2008. Our daughter was born yeah, in 2000. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Same recession. Because yep. then you were, we, we were at 2002 a minute ago. Right. And, and so 2008. That was, you know, six years of uh, opening yeah. it as much as I could, you know, down there. And man, I'll tell you to be a new mom. Um, and a real estate business owner, you know, in a country where like the first thing people stop buying in the recession are luxury vacation homes in third world countries, you know? And so yeah. it was just like a standstill and all of the projects that I represented were backed by Lehman Brothers. And so it was like, the mm. doors were like shuttered the next day. And you're just like, what do we wow. do? Now? And there was yeah. nothing to go back to in Hawaii because the market was just as bad here. My husband's also a realtor. And so it's like, what do you do? You just watch right. your book out to ching to ching. Yep. I remember you know, that. Not yep. fun. And so yeah, we finally, scary. our intention was always to come back to Hawaii. Um, but there really, like I said, there wasn't much to come back to. We got one great sale, thank heavens for it. And it allowed us the money to like get rid of everything. One there. great sale, uh, wait, one great sale in Costa Rica and Hawaii. To, in Costa Rica to afford okay. us to come back to Hawaii. Gotcha. Wow. Our roots again. So what's really interesting though, is that you might be number one in a real estate market, but as soon as you move to another area, you start all over because yeah. there's, you know, you're at the bottom of the totem pole. You, people don't know you. It's been years since they've seen you in my case, you know, and, and I had done so much, but it, it didn't, it didn't count for anything, you know, back here. Yeah. It was really daunting. And the people who, you know, historically have done best here in real estate are, you know, kind of the, the older generation, you know, of realtors that have been here since the 80s selling. And here I was, you know, young mom in my 30s, you know, starting out again. And, um, you know, at first, we didn't even want to be in real estate. It was so heartbreaking coming back from, from the recession and watching my clients lose their shirt. And, you know, just like, yeah. nothing was working. We, we decided we were going to do a whole other business. And uh, I had this one client that called me. And they said, we really, really want to buy this house and we want you to be our agent. And I'm just like, oh God, I don't want to do this anymore. Like just, just this one. So I call up uh, the owner of Sotheby's here. At the time it was Dodie MacArthur, lovely, strong woman. And uh, I said, listen, I need a one and done. I need to hang my license for just this transaction and that's it. And I think, you know, she saw me and she kind of knew my history and she was like, no, I have other plans mm. for you. And I'm like, I'm never going to be your top producer. I'm, you're not going to see my name on any billboards. Or I'm like, I'm, I'm done. Famous last words again, right? So this ended up being best client of my career because not only did you buy that house, but between all of the transactions we've done, it's probably over $80 million at this point, including a $65 million development in one of the resorts called La Lea. And wow. this gets to a great story of how I met you. So oh, wow, I love it. I'm just gonna dovetail it right in yeah, there. Yeah, so for it. <laughs> I don't even have to ask you questions. Yeah, Kim, this is great. I'm sorry, but I just like it. No, 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 please. So um, this development was started in 2015, raw piece of land. We did 17 uh, homes, kind of minimized homes in the Monolani Resort. And the timing was good for something brand new in the resorts, but, we were asking a, a 
high ceiling for our, our properties, like in the three to $4 million range. And at the time I was really only predicting up to about 3 million, you know, was the ceiling. So it was pushing the, the, the pricing and we hit a, a slump. We'd sold, you know, eight or nine of them, but we still had, you know, eight more left to sell. And the developer looked at me and he's like, so what are you going to do for me? And I'm like, well, I've you know put it out there as much as I can. He's like, well, what about your connections in the mainland you always talk about? And I'm like, oh yeah, well, I've sent the brochures. And he's, well, what have you done to get them out here to see it? I'm like, like to fly here, like to see it. And he's like, yeah, you need to go on a road show and get these things sold. I'm this guy. Yeah. And, you know, it was tough because, you know, your comfort zone is, you know, work in your little nest of, of your people yeah. and, you, you know, try to reach out as much as you can, but he wanted a more aggressive approach. So I called a mutual friend of ours, Bill Fandel from Telluride. And I, I said, Phil, Phil. I, I had spoken with him on a panel here on something, you know, years before and we were friends. I'm like, Phil, Bill, I've got to go on this road trip. Um, you know, I want to see some people on the West Coast in our feeder markets. Do you have any suggestions for, you know, where I can go, who I can meet? And he's like, I'll send you some names. So he sends me like three or four people, three people maybe on the West Coast. And I start calling and, you know, through him, they're like, yeah, happy to meet with you, come out for lunch. And I set up a road trip. What was so interesting is that I didn't realize at the time that I was kind of being interviewed passively to join this incredible networking group that, that Bill was part of at the time. And each person I was meeting in the group was vetting me, you know, to, to join this Love group. It. Yeah. And I would be sitting with Neil Bassey and Greg Lynn in San Francisco for a meeting uh, and getting to know these guys for the first time. And they're like, you know, you need to know, you got to meet Mark Noah in Los Angeles and call it Mark. Mark, she's going to fly down tomorrow to meet you. I'm like, okay, I'll go. So I fly down and meet Mark Noah and have dinner with him. And, you know, we become super good friends. And then I fly up to Seattle and meet Stacy Jones and go to dinner and like Christmas, you know, party with her, her whole office while I'm there. And they're just sending me all over, connecting me with these awesome people. I and, love it. And it became, you know, probably the, not probably, it was the game changer in my business is that meeting this nexus of top professionals who give more than they get, who just, you know, want to pay it forward in these relationships they've become my family. These are some of my very, very closest friends. We've done incredible business together. And now like, I wouldn't dream of flying into Atlanta and not having dinner with you because you're part exactly. of this. Exactly. So I'm exactly. just really thankful. really thankful. And they're like, all of those names or most of them are on the show, but they were friends first instead of not like family. Like They're like family. Yeah. I love it. All right. So there's your story. I mean, amazing story. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Remind uh, me the uh, name of the development. Didn't you say, did you send me a bag or something from this development? I, was that yours? Or? Yes. The residences of Laulea. Mm -hmm. This has been. What is it? What color is it? Oh gosh. It look like? it, it, we had a couple different iterations, but probably pink one with a, uh, like a flower back. I think I've got it. I think I've got it somewhere. Okay. So anyway, so tell us, I mean, that is like, talk about huge i don't even know where to begin with you because you've got this career in costa rica that you fell into and became the top agent and then you make your way back into hawaii and you're like i'm done which any of us in real estate can relate to that feeling i mean in anything you do and go all out at everybody goes through that what i mean where do i start like first of all Let's start at towards the end of the story, though. You were done, but you stayed. Like, what kept you in it? And we sparked, because some of it was forced, but something re sparked your passion for this business. What was that? You know, what was really interesting to see is that, you know, as I got back into that one deal, I realized it was, it was an epiphany almost that the culmination of all of my previous jobs and business skills throughout my 20s and 30s finally we're all coming together like i had worked in the golf industry i was a rep for TaylorMade in uh micronesia and southeast asia i lived in guam you know for a couple of years doing that you know early on and i'd worked in you know like plastic surgery and and like you look at you know when you're when you're selling luxury real estate you're not selling it you're helping people buy it you're not not telling yeah. them you this house right like you're, you're showing them the options and helping them yeah. make Plastic surgery is really similar. It's like someone doesn't walk in the office like, whoa, we got a, a big job to do on you. Get the checklist, you know? It's like, what are you here for? 
and and there's so much psychology you know that goes into yeah. that and yeah. and then you know just working in hotels and as a concierge and you know all these other side jobs I did through college and all this too it all kind of you know hit a point where I'm like I use all of these skills every day in what I do and mm-hmm. anybody who does real estate you know full time knows you know, it is a psychology business, you know, this much is actual real estate knowledge, you know, that truly managing your clients, managing the other agents, you know, trying to keep yourself cool in in stressful situations. It's that person who perseveres in this business because it's all about relationships, right? Mm -hmm. And if you make relationships and keep relationships and heal relationships, you might as well find something else to do. May keep and heal, right? right? And here, especially I'm on an island. Okay. Like, I mean, there's, you know, a couple thousand agents here. I'm going to run into you when I drop my daughter off at school and at the farmer's market and at the grocery store. And like, we're very, very connected here. And so to me, the goal of every transaction is get through it safely, (laughs) make my clients happy and hopefully come out on the other end, better friends with people on all sides, if possible, you know? Yeah. So Reese Barker, do you think you just kind of finally found, because you love what you're good at, it was it a matter of you just figured out why well, I'm good at this or you know, was it? I think it, this sounds, this is probably not the best answer in the sense of, I'd love to give you some like really ambitious, like, you know, yeah. I, I'm not for the stars and this. No, I, yeah, I'm the truth, practical. Yeah. I am a right now 46 year old hardworking mom. And, you know, we live in a beautiful place, but it's an expensive place to live. And there's only so many things you can do to make a buck and still have a life. And real estate is one of like the biggest freedoms. And I try to tell young women this, I'm like, I'm just telling you, you know, there's, there's the passions you want to find in your life. That's great and all. But when you had to get practical about how you, you know, earn a living to me, the other quotient is your lifestyle. How do you make your lifestyle work for me? I moved to Hawaii early on because I knew I wanted this beautiful tropical lifestyle. And then I found the the opportunities here in order to afford to live here. But truly, like there's not a better job for a working mom where you can still make the school performances or say, I'm going out of town for July, which I'm getting ready to do. And you're not answering to anybody. You're in charge of, you know, your future. There's no ceiling to how much you can make. You're not managing anyone if you don't want to. You're not taking direction from anybody. It's the best yeah. of all worlds. And I figured out I'm a really self-reliant person. I get up every day and give 200%. I don't care what day of the week it is. Yeah. Uh, I always, you know, make my relationships with my clients and realtors the priority in my day. And it's the it's the friendships that come from those relationships that are the rewarding part of what we do. I mean, there's so a true. dollar sign reward, which is great, but ultimately I get to help people the way that I help them in medicine, you know, too, like I, I'm truly helping people. This is a way more comprehensive sales experience in Hawaii because usually they've never lived here before. They don't have any of the contacts, you know, most everything is knowing somebody to get something done. And, you know, th- my relationship with them after closing doesn't end. It's like, this is just the beginning. You know, you're going to call me for your yard man and your nail lady and your, you know, babysitter. So and true. And and I when love- everything they did, they for, like the things you forget that you take for granted that you know where you live and then you move and it's like oh wait it's there's all, all these dentists whatever so okay but now you say I've got flexibility lifestyle which there's true there, that's true but there's also the other end of that where you never quit working I work all the time or you are like you said you're taking off in July but there's got to be oh. there, you don't just take off in July like how do you no. do that. You know, this is the first time in my career, knock on wood, that I think I might actually get a little bit of an unplugged break. And it's only because there has been such a robust market here that I sold all my listings. Like they're gone. Like I've got oh. one. Little so think of all of that. Yeah, you know? this one, by the way, everybody. Right. Yes, yeah. But thankfully, I kind of set my intention. I'm like, I'm going to stop trying to get listings at this date so I can get that time away. Because truly, I mean, the reason why I do everything, Jerry, is for my family. Like that's, yeah. I, I, I have my husband, our 13 year old daughter, both of our moms live here, you know, and all that matters to me is being able to take care of them and, you know, give them a great life. And so yeah. you work really hard to do it, but there's, there's a cost, like you're saying, there's the, you know, my daughter sitting here, you know, at the dinner table as I'm 
working and, yeah. and wanting to have a conversation. I'm like, honey, not now. I got to finish this email. I know. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. But it's better. And that's than- just for you. Yeah. That's we'll going. Yeah. yeah. But the same, but there's a lot of ways that we get to be present that we wouldn't otherwise because you're, it, it relieves me to hear that you do the same thing because I do that. And I'm like, uh, right. But, and I'll say like in this, in interviewing 200 something top real estate agents in the country and some in the world or it, whatever, but is that the really good ones, the top, top, top agents, they are, we are available. Like we're available. That's our job. We are available. And when we're not available, we have a way of being of it. Like, there's always access because it's that's how we're successful. I mean, well, it's, it's about the time zones too. I mean, you're on the East yeah. Coast, so I don't know if you deal with a lot of like European stuff that would affect you, but you know, here, when I wake up at six in the morning, I mean, my phone has oh. 50, you know, missed calls, text messages, and it's like, drink your coffee fast because everyone's been awake for a lot longer than you and you need to jump into action and start, you know, responding. And so what I've been trying to do recently is to, you know, have that coffee moment, just kind of center myself for a bit, you know, dig in a little bit, but make that time to go get the workout in, run the dogs, you know, get, take care of myself before I have to start attending to everybody's day. And this was like, you know, a ninja sales practice is to say, you know, run your day, don't let your day run you. And it's like, like Mm -hmm. if I, that's my mantra. I'm like, okay, I'm spinning out here. I'm taking care of everybody else's needs. Run your day got to plan it out like that and it helps i always say plan it the day before tomorrow starts the day before tomorrow starts the night before so and like you say what do you do you you need to be available but i know some realtors that say i don't work on sundays and this is my family Mm -hmm. time what's that like (laughs) that sounds so fabulous but sure enough you know that 10 million dollar buyer you've been waiting for is like i'll be arriving sunday morning you're like okay well right and i'll i'll say i you know when you look at the top agents in luxury real estate, there's not the day off. And I have seen in my career, luxury agents try to pull that off. And guess what? Their sales went down. So yeah, there's balance. The guy's working every day. Or there's a way, I know we just had an interview with Dusty Baker in Santa Barbara. He has figured out how to get some weekends off. But even in those weekends off, there's always the chance he's going to have to show up. And that's just our life. But you count the blessings and what that means and what that is and what we have. Well, it's been an interesting lesson. Yeah. You know, Dusty has an incredible wife and two young, young kids. You know, I have my husband, thank God, who is a licensed agent, you know, so he can also sell and get that too. Yeah. But he's also kind of Mr. Mom, you know, for us. Like I come home every night to like the most beautiful dinner, you know, on the table and a glass of wine set for me and dogs have been run and the kids picked up and I couldn't do it without him. There's no way. Exactly. I, I look at, you know, single moms who try to pull off this I don't job. Know how. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how. Yeah. You get one job done, you know? Exactly. Well, good nanny, good au pair. But still, it's, it makes, it, having, the, having the right partner who gets it makes the biggest difference. Oh, for sure. All right. So we're going to ask, you've got, you've given us your story, which is so cool, but we're going to make you give yourself a little credit, I hope, because we're going to figure out what your secret is. What is your secret sauce? Like what makes you different? You, do you think from other ages, this is quite the competitive industry and you've repeatedly risen to the top? Thank you, Jerry. Um, you know, I think it's, it's two things. One is going back to that whole connectivity with other top agents, you know, throughout the country and the world. Uh, by virtue of where I've lived, it's been really helpful to, you know, pick up the gym agents, you know, along the way. But in the last few years, I've made a real concerted effort to understand, you know, where our feeder markets are, to find the best of the best there, to make mm-hmm. real relationships with them, and, you know, to, to foster those into bigger friendships so I can help them as well. But the collaboration that has happened for me has been the game changer in my business. And it also has given me the edge when I go in for a listing presentation, because, you know, like I say, everyone's going to take good photos. Everyone's going to do social media. Everyone's going to do the brush. Like these are all the things. So other than what brand you work for, which, you know, you can leverage, you know, to me, the, the big issue is I might be able to make a phone call and find your buyer in this case, because I know who their agent is in Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle, you know, you name the market. Yep. That's it. And, and it, it just takes one call sometimes, you know, to make that happen. So that's one aspect, but in terms of me, the realtor, I think the thing that I do 
really, really well is I manage a transaction really comprehensively. I try to uh, work really well with the agent on the other side. I try to keep everybody's tempers nice and cool. You know, it's getting into escrow is the easy part we all know. It's when you, you know, yeah. hit the bump in the road, you know, how do you deliver that news? How do you take the, the, the message and then filter it in a way that doesn't incite the other person, even if it's coming off kind of heavy, you know, like my job mm -hmm. kind of feels like the filter to keep everything cool. You're the and, great, you're the great diffuser of heightened emotions. Exactly. And it doesn't mean that I'm, you know, dead inside and, and not, you know, it's quite um, the opposite. It's quite aware. It's that you gotta have I a real like level I, of awareness to do that. Well, I think it's a, it's a compassion and, and understanding people. It's like, you know what? I know he didn't mean to say it this way. He's just under a lot of pressure mm -hmm. and you know, this is the biggest sale of his career. And, you know, the agent on the other side and just got to help him here. Or, you know, this woman just lost her husband and she's, you know, really emotional right now. And she's making really, you know, crazy reactive decisions because she just can't think clearly. I'm going to filter that and say it like this. And, and afterwards, I mean, you know, in this business, you get the apologies like, oh, I really let loose on you. I'm so sorry. And, and I'm always like, I, I come to expect it. It's fine. I don't take it. Right, exactly. That's just, part of my job. That's it. Yeah. But I really, yeah. you know, my husband is often like in the car with me and I'm on these calls and stuff and I'll hang up and he's like, you are just incredible. And I'm like, oh, please. And he's like, Molly, nobody would have been able to not scream at that guy screaming at you, you know, but, but truly I think. It's on it, how you're hearing it though, I think. And sometimes you've got to show teeth in this business or people. Yeah. And no win. That's it. No win. So and here's to you. Cause you, we've been in a lot of calls together and you're always smiling. You're always positive. So how do you know when the time is to like bite back or give it back a little? When yeah. is that time? It's, you know, there's a switch I can flip if I have to. I don't like that side. I don't, you know, get off on, on being like that. In fact, I feel bad afterwards, you know, a lot of times when I do, but you come to realize there are some personalities that only respect that in this business. Yeah. And so you just, you've got to be really self-aware and you've got to be a real um, aware person of other people's personalities and what's driving it. And my mom has this incredible mantra since I was a kid uh, that I say all the time, which is it's better to win than to be right. Mm. And to win, so in that, true. right. To win in those scenarios is like, I want to get to the finish line of this escrow, you know, like that's all that matters. And if I have to just say, I'm sorry today to like pacify it or throw money at the deal to make the problem go away or whatever it is, I want to win. Even if it's not, you know, like me saying, I told you it was like this. Where is that going to get you? Know? Well, right? it's interesting how sometimes like in the moment, you just, it's human nature to just want to be right. Yeah. But when you let the person be right, that helps diffuse the situation and the emotions. And then usually when they feel like nobody's calling them wrong, they'll chill and come back because everybody knows, everybody, like the truth's the truth. It doesn't like change. There's different perspectives, but it is what it is. It, you can just diffuse that by acknowledging it. Like they just come back. Well, and talk about things, you know, like yeah. I'm really comfortable in confrontation and you realize a lot of people aren't. And so I have no problem calling, you know, that other agent and just saying like, look, you know, I'm sorry. I know we hit the skids here, you know, yeah. part in it, like, you know, the emotions got heated and, you know, whatever it is, but we let's get through this. You know, what matters is this and, and trying to make up, you know, and be forgiving because like, does it matter? Forgiving. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Like move on with it. You know, it's just real estate. This is not brain surgery. So. Yeah, but how did you, a lot of people, especially in the heat of the moment, don't sense or know that they can't do the, they, a lot of people, it's hard to check in. How do you check in and know that? You know, what's funny about this question is the people I notice who are the worst at this are realtors, brokers who are selling their own home or buying their own home. It's like, we are so cool and collected in our, you know, day-to-day -day operations representing other people, but God forbid it's that, you know, agents selling their own place. And I think, you know, for me, it was just a culmination of seeing deals that should have just hit the rocks and blown to bits. And then we got through it. And then the relationships years later with those agents, like, I don't know how we did that, you know? And it was, yeah, it was like, learning from those experiences and saying, you know, here's what didn't work and what did, but I've been doing this a long time now. And again, it just comes back to the relationships. That's it. Wow. All right. What is your, I'm checking the time because you've got, you've got 15, really 20, but we're going to give you at least 15 minutes to make sure you're not late. But anyway, what has been your biggest aha about being a real estate agent? 
to someone who, whose parents were agents, by the way. So this is going to be interesting. Well, I think it really, it goes back to, I didn't intend to get to this career or this status in this career as a top producer. I didn't set out that way. It comes from just getting up every day and working hard. And I saw both of my parents, you know, do it my whole life. And this, this brings together a few subjects we've talked about. My mom, who was a very hardworking single mom growing up, uh, felt like she didn't spend enough time, you know, with me and always felt guilty about that. And yeah. I didn't do that as a kid. Um, I just saw my mom working hard and because she did, I know how to work hard and I'll never be poor yeah. because I'll always know how to go make a buck, you know? And my dad too, like he's one of those realtors, you know, 24 seven answering the calls and realizing you just have to take care of people and, and handle it with integrity. And so I think now at my age, you know, with my family and, and all that we have, I realize that all that really matters to me is maintaining. I don't need to have some big accolade as, you know, the number one agent in Hawaii, you know, I'm in the top 10 and I'm really thrilled about that. You know, that's, that's a huge accomplishment, but it's not what drives me. What drives me is the vacation I'm getting ready to take in July with my family. And just like that time away and just knowing like, I'm going to close these nine escrows that I have in the next two weeks so that I can clear my plate and go be present for my family. And I think that's the aha at this stage of my life is I'm not working for more money. I mean, we got to have money to survive, but it's not like I got to make this every year. You yeah. know, or another. I'm not trying to get some sort of, um, you know, recognition for it. I just want to do a good job, have peaceful, happy relationships with people around me and have more time with my family and to take care of my health. And it's like, if I can do all those things, that defines success for me. I want to just live a happy, healthy peaceful life in Hawaii because who has it better than that? Yeah. Be honest, right? Like uh, I wouldn't trade places with anybody. And do you find, I think like we all go through a stage of your career where you just have to work for it. You've got to make that, you've got to work, you've got to grind, whatever. But then as you, it's kind of like what got you here won't get you there. Yeah. Have you found there's a point in your career where you go, okay, I've proven myself now by actually just being good and not grinding and pushing so hard, at some point grinding and pushing works against you instead of for you. Well, you know what you find when you get to this stage of your career is that you can be more selective about who you work with. Mm -hmm. And that makes things a lot easier, you know? like Which when you serves get... all of your clients better besides yourself. Well, I didn't hear you. What'd you say? The so beginning? did she, when you select the best client, when you can select the good clients, the ones that aren't toxic or consuming or just a bad fit, because it might just have been better for somebody else. Exactly. Then it serves not only yourself, but your other clients and then That's feeds right. itself to do better business. That's exactly right. And it just, at this stage, we've all been in those situations where you just get those, those people that are, they're soul suckers, you know? Yeah. And I'm not, I'm past that. I get, to, and it doesn't yeah, mean it you know, it's all easy breezy. You still have hardships, but if you can, you know, select out the things that are right off the bat, you know, red flags it's just what a happier way to work you know that you know that you're compatible with these clients and you kind of see things the same way and um, it's made things a little bit less dramatic <laughs> let's say what would your advice be on that to a newer agent I think as a newer agent it's okay I've got to take the business I can get my you know one is like just always be learning yeah but what is your advice and and how do you navigate because I will say I have in my past, in the former years, I have taken on some really difficult clients and they were some of the best, some of the best educations I ever got, even though I don't think I'd take them again, or that's it might true. just go better with them if I took them again now, but what's yeah, yours? You're right. Yeah. That's, that's a big part of it. And, and I mean, you learn something in every single transaction, you know, but you're right. Some of the harder ones that have put me through it at the end, you're like, well, now I'm capable of, you know, this and got, and a, lot, got a lot out of that. Yeah. But I will say, you know, at, at this stage here in Hawaii, the other thing that I've really figured out too is, you know, focus on what you're an expert in. And, you know, we get referrals, you know, all the time, you know, thankfully that, that is hundred percent of my business is, is referrals coming in. Yeah. Uh, but I do a lot of upfront uh, intake with new clients to really get to know them before we even start talking about houses. You know, I want to know What's your family composition? Who's coming out here? How many times have you been here? Where have you stayed? What do you like oh, to do? Oh, great. Yeah, exactly. Get to and know I'll, them. It, it's huge. And then yeah. 
it's like, you know, a little formula rain man in my head. I'm like, doo, 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 doo. yeah, okay. They're good fit for this area. And if it's my area, perfect zero in on it there. But if I'm like, you know, they're really more East side, you know, like jungly kinds of people, boom, referral to that agent, you know, that's over yeah. there because you're one person. This is a huge Island. Like I said, it can't, I know a lot about a lot of the Island, but you can't cover it all. And so getting more, you know, specified about what you're good at, what you love to do, you know, for me, it's the resort communities. I know them very intimately. I feel really comfortable working down there. I'm in the middle of selling Wayne Newton's 230 acre conservation zone forest land, you know, with the most beautiful waterfalls you've ever seen in the middle of the jungle. It's gorgeous. And it's Wayne Newton and he and his wife are two of the nicest people I've ever met, but I didn't know anything about, you know, conservation zone, you know, like what can yeah. you do there? So I brought on a partner you know, in our business. And she has been fabulous. She was born and raised in that area, swam every one of those waterfalls in her lifetime. And wow. bringing yeah. in partners to augment your, your blind spots. Great you know, advice. Huge. And refer it out if it's not right in your wheelhouse. You know, it's not you know, worth time. It's here to everybody listening. I have found again, everybody, all the, the top, top agents, they know when to bring partners in and the right partners. That's right. You know, it's just like, aligning this whole every like I'm thinking about what's the name of this podcast everything is about just aligning yourself it's just aligning with the right people the right relationships the right mindset just the right alignment it's not a fight it's alignment and you're if you're like-minded when it comes to like the referrals perfect example you you know any of the other people we mentioned on the west coast here when they send somebody to me who is their regular client you know there Mm -hmm. They already know I'm going to work like that person does, like Mike Dreyfus, you know, and Silicon yeah. Valley. And so already I've gone through, you know, 75% of like the concerns people would have working with a new agent. Can they trust me? Am I going to follow up? You know, and am I going to be confidential? They know Mike Dreyfus works like this. Molly's going to work like Love this. Him. Yeah. And, and it just, it, you know, when you work with like-minded people like that, well, it's like you, you are who you surround yourself with, right? I'm with so Mary. true. Couldn't I am be true. Mary who love their family, who work hard, who value relationships, who give it all and leave it, you know, on the on the floor with their clients. Like just don't give up like that. And then I know when I make that referral, they'll do the same thing. Exactly. Alignment. All right. Now like, we've got to do the final three questions. Alignment. Ooh. Final three. I want to get you out of here on time. Okay. So final three. Number one. What has been your most powerful resource in your success? Networks. Hmm. Number two, what is your book like that you, do you have a book or if you had to recommend a book, what is it? It's changed your life and or career. You know, the book that changed my career was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That's what the really? first person gave to me. Yeah, yeah, I haven't heard that one in a long time. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, how so? Yeah. And it was just, it was, that's more about investing in stuff too. Yeah. But here was this, you know, 38 year old plastic surgeon who said, if I could do it all over again, I would be investing in more real estate, you know, young and, and And there you, right. Yeah. You know, if I get in a accident while I'm skiing and I bust one of my hands, I don't work anymore. If I'm not in the operating room, I'm not making any money, you know? Yeah. when you're in real estate, you're making, you know, like I made a deal. We were in Greece on vacation a couple of years ago. I'm laying on the beach, put like a $5 million deal together on vacation. I'm like, this is how I like to work. You know, like it's an incredible business that way. So that was the turning. That's true. But then you were supposed to be on vacation. But then again, like I remember having two babies in labor and like doing deals. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was chilling property two days. You can, right? I mean, but you can, it's not so bad. Rich dad, poor dad. I love it. Okay. Last question. If there's one thing that you would hope we remember from this interview, if we are going to just forget everything else, what is it? That paying it forward always pays you back. And one of the things Mm -hmm. that I love to do with anybody, you know, realtors or, or friends or family or across, you know, the country and the world is to say, I am a fabulous Hawaii resource for whatever you need to know, whether it's finding a realtor on the other islands or, you know, Hey, we're going to Kauai on a vacation. You know, what would you make sure to do in that, you know, whole time. And I love, you know, this place more than, more than most people who live here. I think it's so special to me. It just oozes out of me. I am a natural ambassador because 
It is so genuine. Well, that's why you have such a beautiful oh. smile all the time. I thought it's you were just a nice theater. person. It's just because you're in Hawaii. It's so true. But I, I, what I love to do with specifically with real estate is there will be, you know, someone like you who is having lunch with your client. And they're like, ah, yeah, I got this property to sell in Hawaii. I need an agent. And you don't know where it is or anything like that. Call me. Let me talk to the client. Let me do this little intake in there. And I'll say, you know what? That's really a perfect fit for Ryan McLaughlin in Maui. And because that's yeah. in the Malaya area and that's where he specializes or, you know, Courtney Brown is up in Kapalua or whatever that might be. Like, I know so many of those people and I love putting them with that. And I don't take any referral fee for that. I just want good. Yeah. Is it, but isn't it amazing? I've had more people call me for Atlanta and I'm not the right agent in Atlanta because of the part of Atlanta or right. whatever they're looking for in Atlanta. And there's already the referral going to the agent calling me. Right. And I just like, Hey, I'm not going to be, a good, I'm not going to make you look good. You're not going to send me another referral if you send me this one. So let's get, let's do the referral where it needs to go. And now I've just taken that off my plate because I wouldn't have done a great job. And I've gotten two agents sending me, not one, but one agent never sending me a referral again. It's going to be a disaster. But two agents sending me more referrals and more and more. Totally. It's so true. So it, paying it forward always pays you back. It's, it's so true. I'm putting that in my business card. That's a good one. <laughs> it's a good tagline. Yes. All right, Molly. That was awesome. Anything else we want to add before we close this up? Gosh, I don't know. We covered a lot of stuff yeah. here. I would just say, you know, what's been really um, interesting as a trend, maybe if that's important, you know, for people yeah. to be thinking of as a topic out in Hawaii. Of course, we know all the resort markets are killing it. Um, but the sight unseen purchases in the last mm. year, like we've always done a little bit of it, but it has just been bananas bonkers. You know, people who are willing to give me $15 million for a home they haven't seen yet, which I could have never predicted. But the really incredible part of it, Jerry, which has been a phenomenal um, learning experience is that by doing this virtual intake with people, you know, like, let me give you a scenario. Moira Holly, perfect example from Real Logic. Yeah. Love her. Yeah. Me incredible buyers from Seattle who had spent time on the coast. This was right at the beginning of COVID. Uh, I, you know, got the referral on a Friday evening, Saturday morning, had a Zoom call with these people. We did like a four hour intake that day because they had a lot of questions. But in that meeting, I was able to screen share, show them the map of the island, 3D, Google Earth, show them, oh, well, this beach is better over here. And you said you like white sand. So you got to go here. And then the wind is like this. And then let me give you a 3D view of what the view is like. And they're just sitting there just like, oh, my, I had no idea you could do this, you know, with technology. Yeah. In 48 hours, we are under contract on a $15 million home, you know, and it was like, if we had to do this in, you know, the, the traditional way. Moira makes the referral on a Friday. They're coming out in a couple of weeks to visit. You know, they get off the plane. They want a couple of days here. You know, you put them in your car for three days and everyone's exhausted. And then all the houses are kind of overwhelming. And, you know, maybe before they leave, you're starting to write an offer. And the whole process has been like vacuum sealed into like this really concise, um, almost like speed dating. Yeah. And it's awesome because it's like instant gratification for people who want answers right away. And I can provide it to them across an ocean, 2,500 miles away. Isn't that interesting? You know? Yeah. So it's like made the gifts of Kev, the things we did that we didn't even have to do, but we couldn't realize it until we were forced to. That's right. That's right. So it's just been fabulous on top of the fact that I love working in my pajamas at home, you know, to do my job a lot of the time. There's this immediacy with relationships that, you know, seeing someone in a, okay, we're going to have an hour. It's just us. We're not going to get distracted. And so true. Um, face to face, you know, has really made me closer. I think with my clients, yeah. that way yeah, of, it's so that true, factor, you know, too. So it's been a, it's been a wild ride the last year. And I'm really thankful for the technology that's there. And I'm really thankful for the relationships that fed me, you know, over COVID time when we didn't think anything was going to happen. And here come the inbound, you know, referrals. So thank you to Moira and, and several others, Mike Dreyfus included, um, for sending great clients my way. But it has been um, a really interesting experience to see, to be part of an entire shift in our industry, to see it change before our eyes and to be part of it. And hasn't it? It's amazing. Like, I remember thinking, like, you know, my parents always said, like, I needed a, a real job. This one's actually working out pretty nicely. Doing okay. 
I think they're proud. This is a real job. Wouldn't have been good right now. So just saying. Anyway. Molly, you're awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Molly Harris in Hawaii. Call her if you need resources in Hawaii anywhere, but you're in the Big Island in Hawaii. If nothing else, I'll just take you to get the best Mai Tai here because, you know, I know. I'm coming for that. I haven't been there. It's been too long. Please do come out. Thank you so much, Jerry. Wonderful Thank to you. see you. Appreciate Good to this. See you. Aloha. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Jerry Metcalf podcast, where top real estate agents tell how they do it. If you like this episode, please share it with friends. To find more episodes, search Jerry Metcalf podcast on any platform for podcasts or go to jerrymetcalfpodcast.com. That's J E R E. M-E-T-C-A-L-F.